Hello and welcome. This is Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to create some unique backgrounds with die cuts. There is a new collection from Spellbinders and Lisa Horton, and I did a recent video with them, but I thought these background pieces or these um, frames and the lattice texture would make some really unique backgrounds. And of course, if I didn't use the interference inks from Lisa Horton, it would be a missed opportunity. Now I've used these inks many, many times playing around with the way they look on light colored cardstock and dark colored cardstock. Often I'll use black ink to make dark areas in whatever I'm doing, whether it's a stamped image, a die cut, or whatnot. Here I decided to use some black cardstock with white cardstock and play around with using the woven lattice texture as well as the stitched circle frames to create some unique backgrounds and then use the florals from the same collection to create some focal images. So I have some white cardstock here that I'm just using as my background and I'm gluing on some black woven texture die cut pieces and I'm going to cover that whole background. Now I wanted to see the difference between white or black on white and white on black. So I'm gonna do this same background twice, but I'm gonna use different colors of the interference inks on top of them. So the first step is to glue those die cuts in place. And while they are drying, I like to put an acrylic block on them to make sure that that glue has good contact with the background and everything is drying nice and flat. I also like to use liquid glue in a fine tip bottle, especially for things like this where I want to make sure all of those pieces are glued down well. I can put some liquid glue on all of the little um, bits of that die cut that stick out. You can see when I'm, before I put my glue on my die cut, I kind of place it where I want to, and then I put my finger where I don't want my glue to go any farther. If I put too much glue on the back of this die cut, it's okay because my surface that I'm working on it's okay if I get glue on it, it's not going to stick to it. I'll be able to easily peel it up, but I don't wanna use any excess glue if I don't need to. The other thing I'm going to do is once this first section is finished drying, I'm going to cut off some of the excess and use it to fill in some of the open spaces for my background here. I want my whole background to be covered with these pieces from these die cuts and create a unique background in this way. Easiest way to cut it off is just to turn the piece over and then use scissors to cut it off. My cardstock here for my background is four and a quarter by five and a half, but I intend to cut it down to four inches by five and a quarter before I create my card so that you see the uh, mat of the card base behind it. So I do have a little bit of wiggle room around those edges. So when I do trim off those extra edges, I don't need to worry about being too perfect because I know that I'm going to trim it down a little bit. Now I know that I'm going to be using interference inks on this and I can't wait to see how that is going to look. But looking at these black die cuts on white and the white on black, I love this background. And I'm already coming up with another idea for a third video with this collection. There's a few pieces from this collection that I haven't received yet that I'm waiting for them to come. So I'm going to save those ideas to do a third video with it which I'm super excited about doing. There's also a press plate to go with this collection, which is one of, or two plus press plates. It's in the same set. It's one of the products that I'm waiting on. And I think it's gonna be fun to play around with those as well as backgrounds for the florals in this collection. So my first background is pretty much done and I'm almost done with the second one here. You can see how quick and easily these come together. So I had three die cuts from each of them. So three white die cuts and three black die cuts. And I still have a few pieces for scraps left that I could use on another project if I wanted to. So I'm gonna set those aside to um, save for that. If you're into doing mixed media or art journaling, I think these backgrounds would be perfect for elements for that to just even create some different background texture. I can't wait to play around with those at some point to see what that's going to look like because I think it's going to look fantastic. So my first or my two first backgrounds are done and I'm going to create my first two cards together and then my other cards I'm not going to I'm going to do them individually. So for my first set of cards I have two different ink pads here. One is Magic Garden and one is Lavender Fields. Now I wanted to use these two together because one of them is purple on 
white cardstock, but green on black cardstock. And then the other one is opposite of that. The other one is green on white cardstock and purple on black cardstock. And I was curious to see how they would work together and the difference between the shimmer on the white and the black. I just wanted to see what they would look like together. And I really like the funky background it creates. Now, the shimmer on the black, you do need to tilt it in the light to see it. You can see a little bit on screen, but the shimmer is absolutely gorgeous. And you do see some of the shimmer on the white as well. So even though it's really meant to be highlighted on the black cardstock, you do see a, a bit of that shimmer on the white. So it's a really fun background and fun texture that it creates. And I love the look of these inks on this die cut background. It does not disappoint in any way, shape or form. I'm applying my inks with ink blending brushes and I do label my brushes and have a brush for each ink pad. It's not necessarily reasonable for everyone. So you can, if you want, when you're done a project, you can rinse out your brushes. These inks wipe off really, really quickly and easily. Even off of stamps and everything, you don't need any special cleaners for them. They're very easy to clean off your stamps, off your work surface. So for my second card here, I'm going to use Peacock Tails and Mermaid Lagoon. Now they both go from a bluey greeny to a purple on black. I actually expected there to be a little bit more color difference between the colors on the white and there really wasn't. One had a bit of more of a blue tone, one had a bit more of a green tone to the turquoise. So I could have just done this whole background with one color and it would have been just fine. There is a little bit of a color difference, but not enough, I think, for um, needing two pads for this one background. One of them would have been just fine. But it's one of those things that you don't necessarily know until you play around with it and use it. I still absolutely love this background, but you don't necessarily need two different pads for this. Now these inks also dry very, very quickly. So I don't need to wait for them to dry and I also don't need to heat set them. So with my backgrounds done here, I can start creating the florals and the other elements for my cards here. And here you can see the two different backgrounds. You can see how that shimmer or the iridescent shimmers in the light. I'm going to use the You Make Me Smile sentiment set for all of the cards that has a die that does the smile and there's three layers to it. And then it has a sub sentiment stamp and it creates five different sub sentiments. I'm going to be using four today because I'm creating four cards, but because the stamps are all on one sheet, you can stamp them all at once. And then I have a coordinating die to cut out those sentiments. And it's very easy to layer them together and to get that die lined up perfectly. I also like to tape that die in place once I have it lined up perfectly. So when I go to do my die cutting, I know that it's not going to move and shift on me. This die set creates sentiments with long strips and rounded edges or rounded ends, but you could easily take those ends and use a trimmer just to trim them straight if you wanted them to be more rectangular looking. There is enough space to do that. For my sentiment, I created my topmost smile sentiment with white cardstock the middle one with black and then the bottom most shadow is white as well. I'm only going to layer the white and the black together because I am going to use one of the interference inks on that smile die cut and I want to have a nice pristine white shadow. So I'm not going to glue that to that at the moment. For my first card, I'm using the layered iris die and I'm using a combination of white and black die cuts and I have one die cut that is a dark gray. That's this one here. I'm gluing them together with that same liquid glue. It's barely art glue and a fine line bottle just to make sure that I have only the amount of glue that I need for these die cuts. By using a liquid glue, I have room to shimmy and move everything around. And by using a fine tip bottle, I can only, I can apply just what I need. I don't have excess glue there. These inks or the glue will resist these inks if you get a little bit too much. And there's a few areas where I had a little bit of excess glue on my background and you could see little white parts. It doesn't affect the finished look in my opinion because I do have some white areas on there and those pieces were so tiny and really it was made from 
putting it, the die cut down and then moving it a little bit and glue being a little bit more exposed. And it protected the white cardstock underneath there, so you see some white areas. I'm using a black distress pad with a detailed ink blending brush, and I'm using it to ink blend some of the areas on my floral die cut here that I want to be darker because I really want to highlight the beauty of these the interference inks and be able to see it on the light and the dark. And the pieces from this die set didn't have as many dark areas as I wanted. So by using a detail brush with some ink blending, it creates, I can put that ink exactly where I want it and create the look that I'm going for. So once I have those die cuts layered together, I'm using my grip mat to hold my pieces down while I do the ink blending. I'm using the Mermaid Lagoon pad here, and my thought was it kind of made it look like I think it's called a dendrobian orchid. One of those orchids that has the turquoise colors to it. Um, they're absolutely gorgeous. And that's the inspiration behind this. There's also an iris that I saw online and it could be completely uh, photoshopped that had this turquoise color too. And I really liked the different color to it. So one of the little die cuts for the iris has two pieces that are buds. I ink blended those as well, and I'm just gluing them onto the stem so that everything is nice and secured in place before I glue it to the front of my card. I'm also doing the same with the iris bloom here. Now that my pieces are all ready, I can start to assemble my card. Now you can see that with that background, um, it doesn't stick out very well. So by taking some vellum, using the stitched circle die set and using the plain circle in there, I can put that vellum circle over my busy background and create an area where I haven't lost that pattern entirely, but it mutes it enough so that my iris stands out. I'm only putting glue on that vellum where I want the head of my iris to go so that I don't see glue on here. Vellum is horrible for being able to see glue through it. And if you wanted to glue down the entire thing, what I would do is use a sheet of adhesive. You can use the Sizzix permanent adhesive sheets before die cutting. That's the perfect way to get adhesive over the whole thing. For this particular use, I figured just a little bit where that orchid is, enough to cover it, but that's going to be enough to glue it down. Then I'm going to take my sentiment and my sub sentiments and glue them to the front of the card as well. When I'm creating, I like to put a large acrylic block over my surface while it's drying, making sure that everything has good contact. And I also will often take that time, place my die cuts over top of that acrylic block so I can see or I can plan my arrangement, see exactly how it's going to look. And then when I move that acrylic block, I move those pieces with me so I can still have that placement. I know exactly where everything is going to go and I don't have to remember where I liked the placement at all. This die set has the leaves separate. So once you have the main piece on your card, you can easily add the leaves exactly where you want them to. And I love having the freedom to add those leaves exactly where I want to place them. Because this card is on a white card base, and because my smile has a white die cut shadow around it, I wanted to add a little bit of white to that iris. So I'm doing that in the form of a white gel pen. This is just the Signal White Gel Pen. It's one of my favorite white gel pens. And just adding those white dots ties it all in together and just adds some extra fun detail to that iris that I think really takes it to the next level. So there is the finished card there. You can see it's got a very simple color palette to it, but I really love it, how it looks and that woven texture on the background. For my second card, I'm using the layered anemone die set. I have them die cut in black and white, and I'm just going to assemble them together before I do my ink, inking on top of them. For the centers of the flowers, I find that using a jewel picker makes it really easy to place those pieces. You can just put that liquid glue in the area that you need it and then use that jewel picker to pick up that die cut. And that way your fingers aren't in the way when you're placing it, as well as the fact that you're not getting glue all over your fingers. I did the same thing for the smile die cut that I did for my last card. I have the uppermost die cut of that smile as well as the last shadow done in white. And then I have the middle one done in black. Now the cardstock that I'm using for these die cuts, um, 
is not very great cardstock. I bought some index cardstock when I was creating or when I was buying cardstock for my card backgrounds and it's just too thin, but it works perfectly for doing die cutting, for doing ink blending on for things like this. And then my black cardstock as well. It's fairly thin, so it wouldn't be good enough for a card base, but for using it for die cutting and creating elements on the front of cards, it's absolutely perfect and it's nice and economical. So my die cuts here, I'm gonna do a little bit of ink blending with the black Distress ink just to add a little bit more dark in areas. And the color that I'm using is the Pink Champagne Pad. It is nice and bright pink on the white and it has a little bit of a green, a pale green iridescence on the back that I, on the black that I thought would uh, coordinate really well with the green on my background here. So now that I have those pieces ink blended, I can start to layer and assemble my die cuts on top of that acrylic block so that I know where I want to place everything. Typically, I'll just place my flower heads. I don't necessarily need to place the stems because once I know where the heads of the flowers are going to go, then I pretty much have a good idea where I'm going to place those stems on the card front. So I leave those die cuts on my acrylic block, remembering exactly where I wanted that placement, place my stems on my card base, and then I can start to assemble everything. I was just checking my finger there to see if my ink was still wet and it absolutely wasn't, it was completely dry. Taking you back to where I said before that you have to wait barely any time at all for these inks to dry. They dry so quickly, which is one of the things that kind of surprised me about them because there is some pigment properties to them. I expected them to stay wet longer, but they dry really, really quickly. And I'm also really impressed at how easy they are to clean up. So easy and I love that you don't need special cleaner. So once I have my card assembled here, I can put my acrylic block on top of there, let those pieces dry, let that glue dry, and you could leave it at that. But I wanted to take some black diamond stickles and add some dots of it to the centers of the flowers. It just adds a fun texture. And because there's all of this iridescent ink on here, everything is pretty much shimmery. I thought it could use a little bit of extra texture from those stickles. So I like to just dot it so that it takes a lot less time to dry and it adds some fun texture to the centers of those flowers. And I love the pop of pink that those flowers give on that background. That background could be fairly busy, but by just adding different colored flowers, it takes away from that background and focuses more on those flowers. So for my third card here, I have a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch black cardstock, and I have the circle or stitch circle die set that I have already die cut out of white cardstock. I'm going to layer these on my black background, very similar to similarly to how I did the last woven lattice texture die cut, but just a different shape. This die set has two different shapes that you can use on the inside of the stitch circles. I'm using the one that's more of a lattice shape. In the next card, I'm going to use the zigzag pattern. And I'm also taking making a point to have my lattice facing the same way for all of the die cuts. You could put them so they're facing different ways, but because my background is gonna be fairly busy as it is, I kind of thought the continuity of having that lattice facing the same way took some of that busyness away from it. Just a personal preference of mine. If you want it to be a little bit more busy or you wanted to layer your lattice a little bit different, you absolutely could do that. You can see I didn't wait long enough for my glue to dry, so I put that die cut right back where I had it and then waited a little bit longer. Sometimes when I'm crafting, I get a little bit impatient and glue doesn't dry fast enough. Even though this Barely Art glue starts to set really quite quickly, Sometimes I don't wait quite long enough. Now with the excess pieces from my die cuts here, I wanted to add just a little bit more to my background. Now that bottom left corner, I knew it needed something, but personally, I like it to have odd numbers to it. So, and I wasn't comfortable with having four pieces of circle there. So I added just a touch of the top or a touch of the edge of one to the top left corner there, just so that there was five pieces. Now, once again, I know I'm gonna put interference inks on the back of this, but I love the impact that that white and black background gives, and I definitely plan to revisit this in the future. So the three colors that I'm using for this background is Galaxy Dream, Crushed Velvet, and then Teal Twist. I chose these because I wanted to create kind of an ombre-ish 
looking background. And I say ish because these aren't really necessarily ombre colors, but I paid attention to the colors that would show up on white and how I thought that they would ink blend together, as well as the colors that would show up on black and how I thought they would ink blend together. Two of the colors here, I'm using detailed ink blending brushes only because I ran out of the other brushes that I like to use. Definitely don't recommend doing this for the backgrounds of cards because it takes way, way longer. So I've cut out a bunch of the ink blending here with my editing, but it still gets the job done. And it was a good reminder to get more of the ink blending brushes because they just work so much easier and so much quicker. Now I really liked especially the way the crushed velvet and the teal twist blended here together. I love the purple that they created on that white background there. So I do go back and do a little bit more ink blending between the crushed velvet and the galaxy dream, hopefully trying to get a little bit more of a blend between those colors, but they didn't quite work exactly the same way as the beautiful blend between the ones that I'm doing right now, which is the crushed velvet and the teal twist. I do really love the background that it creates though with transitioning from different colors here. I actually like this better than my green and purple one. Even though I did that one as a random on purpose, I like this blend here a little bit more with the different stripes going up it. So I have the layered iris here that I've already assembled and I did it the same way as I did my first iris. I didn't show it in the video because I figured once you saw it one way, you didn't really need to see it another way. And I'm using the Galaxy Dream to do the ink blending on it. And at this point, I started by ink blending the entire flower. And at this point, I had a little bit of white around the outside edge of the right side of that flower and I actually really liked the way that it looked. Again, I'm putting this onto a white card base and thought that little bit of white would tie into that white card base as well as the shadow that I intend to have on the background of my smile die cut. So off screen, I did another iris and I did my ink blending, this time making sure to only get the ink towards the center of my flowers, leave a little bit of white around the outside. I don't need to leave a ton of white there, but just enough to really tie in that white and enhance the flowers. This particular color for this iris is really fairly dark. And even though I like it, I love flowers that have unique colors to them that are non-traditional and I'll typically um, even though sometimes I do do traditional colors with flowers, I love ones that have non-traditional colors to them. So that is why I chose this particular color for the flower. I wanted something that was a little bit unexpected, but I really love the look of the white peeking out from some of those edges there. So there we have the finished iris. And when you compare it on the background with the first one, you can see that the one with the white edges definitely pops just a little bit more. So for my smile sentiment, I had just done the teal twist on the bottom. And after a moment, I thought, you know what? I really like the blend between the teal twist and the crushed velvet. So I went back, put it back on my grip mat and then added a little bit of the crushed velvet. So I have the two colors there ink blended for that sentiment before I add it to the white uh, shadow base and I love the look of the two colors on that sentiment there as well. I can glue that background onto my white cardstock base. I'm using the same Barely Art glue for gluing everything. I just love using liquid glue because it just gives you a few moments to shimmy and move things and make sure that everything is straight. For the little buds for my iris there, I kept the tips of those white as well to tie in with my iris colors as well as to tie in with the white around the edge of my card and helpfully or and help those little bits pop and be able to be seen on my background. So I glued my pieces down here and then after gluing them down, I just didn't like how the iris didn't pop as much as I wanted it to on that background. So I do go fix that in a little bit, but I get to a point where I glue most of my card together before I decide to do that. So I also didn't add the shadow behind my smile and it took me a while to even realize that I had forgotten to do that. So I do fix that in a little bit. And because I'm using that liquid glue, even though it starts to grab fairly quickly, it does give you a little bit of wiggle room. So if you realize that you made a mistake or you realize that you want to change something, you can easily do that and lift things up. Sometimes you wait too long and it doesn't um, come up as easily, but at this point it hadn't set enough. So you can see that I put that circle on top of 
that circle die cut below there, again, it just mutes that pattern. It doesn't completely eliminate it. You can see it behind there, but it just gives an area where that iris pops a little bit more. And I centered that circle with the die cut below because I thought it would look nicer that way. I can cut off that excess piece on the side once everything has set a little bit. And once again, I only put the glue in the center of that circle so that the glue uh, would be completely covered by my iris die cut. Now I can add the leaves to the stems of my irises. And once again, I could just place them where I want them for this particular card. I love the fact that I have the freedom to place them in different spots wherever it looks good. And once those leaves have completely dried, I can cut off the excess part of that vellum circle just by turning the card over and using some scissors just to trim that right off there. Now, I really like the white on the outside of my iris, and I thought it'd be fun to add some black dots. So I'm just using a black Posca pen just to dot in towards the center of the flowers, um, just adding a little bit of extra detail. Those are the details that really bring out and enhance your die cut. And after doing the black, I thought I would add some white dots as well, once again, tying in all of that white. And it was during this step that I realized that I had forgotten to add the white shadow behind that smile die cut. So I was a little bit uh, skeptical when picking this die cut off. I thought I was going to completely tear it and ruin it, but it absolutely hadn't. The glue had started setting, but not enough that it was made it impossible to pick up that piece there. And I know when I go to glue the pieces right back onto my card that I'm going to glue them in the same spot anyways. So it's going to cover any of that glue damage from pulling it up. So now that I've glued that back in place, I can, or glued the white shadow behind that smile, I can glue it back in place and then put my sub sentiment back down as well and then let those pieces completely dry. So here is that finished card there. And I love the look of the ombre background with those circles. I think it looks so cool. Now I wanted to take those circles and just use the zigzag. Now I could have done it very similar to my last card, the way I did those zigzags or those circles, but I wanted to do it a little bit different. So I'm only using the zigzag die, and this is only going to cut those zigzags in a circle shape. It's not going to cut an entire circle out because I don't have a circle die around it. This just cuts the inner detail. I'm going to place these dies fairly similarly to the way place I or the placement of the circles in my third card there, but I'm only going to use that one die set. Just the same as that third card, I'm trying to make sure that my zigzags are placed all in the same orientation so that I don't have zigzags. Um, so they're kind of all parallel on the card, or not parallel, they're all kind of horizontal on the card and all... Um, even together. You could scatter them around and having them in different directions if you want to. It's just one of those things that I think it looks a little bit more visually pleasing if they're all at least going the same way. Now I just die cut them on my big shot here. This, I was creating this during the Spellbinders Weekender event and had my platinum six upstairs. So I had grabbed my big shot because this was in my craft room and I didn't even really think about it too much until I had completely finished. Uh, it still works just as well. Um, and I really love the look of the background with those zigzags cut out of a circle. It makes it very unique. With gluing them down, I'm just using that same Barely Art glue, but I am making sure to put glue on all of those zigzags because I don't want anything catching when I'm doing my ink blending. So it does take a little bit longer to put the glue to make sure that everything is covered on each one of those zigzags. But not so much that the glue dries from the first area before the next area is done. Now, if you happen to have any areas that fall out from the edges with those zigzags, you can glue them in place now. I only have the one part that I had glued in place. The other pieces, I hadn't really noticed that they'd fallen out until afterwards, and I wasn't going to go through my scraps to do that ink blend or to do that um, gluing in place. I also knew I was going to be cutting off excess from here, so I didn't want to um, worry about those pieces. I didn't think they were going to be super noticeable. So for this background here, I'm just using the pink champagne. This has a beautiful bright pink on the white cardstock and on the black cardstock, it has a light green iridescent shimmer. So it creates some beautiful impact as well.
for my flowers. I'm going to do the anemones again, and I'm using peacock tails. So this is one of the ones that I used at the beginning, but I thought the blue flowers were going to be nice and impactful on the front or above that pink and black background. And I really love the way that they look. That second flower there, I created it leaving a little bit of white space around the outside edge. And again, you could do that with all of the flowers because this is going on a white card base. It's just going to tie in with that as well. But it's just a different way to ink blend for a little bit more interest. Once this is completely dry, I can cut this down to four inches by five and a quarter. And I made sure to cut from all four sides to even anything out that might not be absolutely perfect. There was one point of one of the zigzags that fell off at this point, and I just used that glue to glue it back in place. Otherwise, there would be the white cardstock below there. And then I could glue my ink blended smile die cut on top of the white shadow. Now for this one, I did the ink blending on the bottom going up, and then I did a little bit of ink blending on the top going down. So there's almost a white, a light highlight in towards the top third part of it. I figured that was gonna create, again, a little bit of a different look from the way that I've created them before. It still keeps that white in there and coordinates all of those pieces together perfectly. But again, the nice thing about doing the ink blending is you can create some custom looks and make things um, more unique than if you were to get, just use some colored cardstock. Now that I know where I want my flowers placed, I'm gonna put my stems down and then I can glue those flowers down. The anemone die set creates two flowers, and I'm only using two flowers for this card, but you could easily add more flowers if you wanted. I decided to only use two because my background is so busy. I didn't want to overwhelm it with a ton of flowers on the cards. I figured a little bit is great, but I didn't want there to be too many. I'm also gluing down that smile sentiment as well as the sub sentiment. And with those main die cuts in place, I can start gluing down the leaves. And again, the die set creates two different leaves and I only use the two leaves here. You could easily die cut more if you wanted more leaves on it, but I don't necessarily think that you need to. While that is drying, I decided to use my white gel pen and add a little bit of dots to the center of these flowers. Again, it, just some of these dots are things that are very, very simple to do, but they just add some fun detail. And then I took a stickles and I added them to the centers of the flowers. And I decided at that point to add it to my smile sentiment as well. I'm only putting them on the raised innermost part of that sentiment. So I'm not completely covering everything. The other thing that you could do is cut glitter paper out of this, but you can't do the ink blending on top of glitter paper. So this is a great alternative. You still get that ink blended look. You can put the stickles so you get the glitter on top of that, but you can um, still see the ink blending underneath them because the stickles is transparent. I have a push pin that I leave on my desk that I use to clean up things like this. So if by chance when you're getting stickles on something and you, you know, it comes over the edge, you can clean it up really easily while it's still wet by using a push pin or a thumbtack. Once that is completely dry, this is the finished card. And I love the combination of the shimmer from the interference ink pads with the stickles on my flowers and on my smile sentiment. These cards turned out so, so well. I love the combination of using the Lisa Horton die set that's in collaboration with Spellbinders as well as her interference inks. They always wow to me and I absolutely love the way they look. I have a full playlist of cards and techniques used with these inks. So if there's something that interests you in any way, shape or form, go check out that playlist because there are so many more ideas and ways to use them. They are my absolute favorite and I call them my magic ink pads because I'm never not wowed or I'm always wowed when I use those ink pads. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. I really appreciate you being here. I hope you have a fantastic day.